If you're a middle school math teacher looking to start how to add middle school math stations into your classroom, but you're unsure of how to do it, I have three tips to make it super easy and super doable. If we don't already know each other, my name is Kathy Martin, and I'm the creator of the Pre-Algebra Teachers Middle School Math Membership. We are here to help make your life as a 6th, 7th, 8th grade, or Algebra 1 teacher easy so that you can engage your students inside the classroom and still have a life outside the classroom. So three easy tips to make middle school math stations easy and doable in your classroom. First off, I just wanna say, if you are scared to start stations in your classroom, it's okay, trust me. When I first started, I tried and failed about four to five times, really not thinking that after the fifth time, I really did not think that it was gonna be doable in my classroom. And I, I practiced refined, I practiced refined, and I, I've made it work so that now I run stations about two times a week in my classroom. And the way that I start, the way that I recommend doing this for every teacher, tip number one, okay? Instead of, because when you are in stations, the idea is that you might have say anywhere between three to five stations, small, you know, students are grouped in small group doing different activities. So you're probably thinking, okay, so I'm gonna need four to five activities for each, you know, station for the kids to do. Do not just throw together four to five activities at once. If you are just getting started, okay, tip number one is everyone starts off doing the same activity and you want all of your students to be working on the same activity um, for a few weeks you could throw in separate activities so for example i love using task cards so i will have my students physically get into groups into their small um, station but everyone is doing the same set of task cards then maybe tomorrow or in a few days, I might put them in groups again, and then everybody is doing the same, say, digital mystery puzzle. And then in a few days, again, I'm gonna put everyone in a small group and everyone is doing the same coloring page. Okay, and the reason why you want everyone to be doing the same exact activity is so that students one, understand how to do the activity, and you are allowing yourself the opportunity to explain the directions, answer questions about the activity, show students how you want this activity to be done. If there's, you know, like maybe several parts, or if you want, like for task cards, like I like my students to show me their work on a particular type of paper. They have to set, set up their paper a specific way. Please put the task cards back in order. Like there's just different, um, procedures that we have to go through for this particular activity. So I want to be able to take the time to show them and I will will do task cards more than one day, right? We want to practice the task cards. If it's kind of an easier activity where your students have seen it a bunch of times, maybe you don't need more than one day, but everyone does the same activity. Okay, step number two, it kind of goes along with with step one or tip number one is get into those small groups even though everyone is working on the same activity and in theory you know you could be sitting at your regular table do you know your classroom kind of looks the same but practice getting into those stations because again you want to be able to show your students the procedures how do we get in and out of stations what are they supposed to do while they are at the station what are the rules when they are in the stations? And these are things that they have to physically practice. So their brains like, oh, we're in the stations. We're, we're doing stations today. Okay, so, you know, we have to move the tables. If if you have to move tables, I have to move tables in my class. Um, you know, like they just know like, okay, I have to put certain things away. I have to get certain things out. It's going over just like you would on the first day of school or in those first few weeks of school the procedures, the rules, the consequences, the expectation of behavior, all of those things, they your students need to practice them while they are in the station, okay? And then tip number three, 
Tip number three is to give yourself the time that you and your students need to really get this going. I, I don't want to tell you, yeah, you might, you know, it, it'll take a month or I don't want to give you a specific timeline of how long it should it should take to set things up because each of your classes within the day will be different, right? So when you want to start introducing a secondary activity, make sure that your students really know what all the activities are. And that is going to be totally dependent on the kids that you have in your particular classes, because we all know like your first period class could be totally different than your second period class. Same same level math, right? Could be just like seventh grade math, but they are completely different and you have to treat them differently. So, you know, it might take you two weeks to kind of set everything up for one class, but it might take you another, a month for, for a different class. So give yourself the time and, and space and the grace. Like it's okay if it's taken you a little bit longer, but it's, it's okay if the students, if your students need, you know, to practice more, to really, for you to hone in on behavior management, because it really takes, like, it, it really takes for you to run things the way, to show your students how you want things to, to be run, to set that expectation up so that when you allow the when when you think it's the right time to kind of for kids to to do the independent thing um it goes smoothly if you would like more training on this if you want more of an in-depth explanation where i show you exactly what to do set up stations how to set things up how to set up behavior management systems so that things run easy, when to set up, when to bring in that teacher station. I show you everything, lots of examples, lots of um, pictures because I'm a visual learner. We have a free uh, teacher training where you can sign up. We have flexibility on dates and times and you get uh, to print out a certificate for one hour of professional development after the training. So use the link below in the description box if you would like to sign up. The training is completely free and it's it's a really an amazing training to help you get started with stations to sh where I show you exactly what I use as stations. Really, it's step by step on how to make stations easy, doable and ready for you to implement. So again, use the link below in the description box if you want to sign up and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.